lots of times if I teach this technique in seminar, uh, a lot of the beginners, especially the smaller students, just are in disbelief uh, that this would actually work against a larger opponent. But I assure you, this is one of the most time-tested techniques in martial arts. The art of fighting without fighting? Show me some of it. Hi there everybody, Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis and today we're doing one of my favorite videos where I am going to be reacting to self-defense on TikTok. Now of course if you are new to the channel be sure to hit the thumbs up, click the subscribe button and click on that little bell button so that you can get notified anytime I release a new video. So let's start off by taking a look at this video and kind of breaking it down. Here's how you can break free when your hands are pinned to the so ground. So she's defending against somebody pinning her to the ground. Bump up your hips and trap one arm. She does a trap and roll, which is a classic trap and roll 101. Now that you're free, and then goes in for an elbow and a groin stomp. Here's how okay, you can break cool. Free. So from the get-go, I like a lot about this technique. Trap and roll is one of the tried and true escapes from under top mount. Top mount is defined whenever someone's legs are around you and they're like sitting on your belly or sitting on your chest. Specifically, their knees are on the ground. Lots of times this is used as a position for like a ground and pound or for someone to reach out and choke you. Or in this lady's case, she ends up getting put in what I call in my school the bully pin, which is where your arms are pinned up by your head. Now she does a basic hip bump or uh, what we call the upa. So there's the upa, and then she traps an arm and traps a leg. So let's first talk about the uh, what she could have done better there. One of the first things I really want to point out that's kind of dangerous, bad habit, is this fully extended arm. If someone is on top of you, they are probably either planning to choke you or punch you. And having your arms fully extended out in front of you is allowing either of those tasks to be done relatively easily. So me and my students have done a lot of experimenting with this extended arm issue. And even my students who have much longer arms than me cannot prevent me from striking them even with their arms fully extended. So if someone is on top of you, the last thing you really wanna do is extend your hands out the way you see her doing here. She's also going for an eye gouge here. And whereas the eye gouge is by far one of my favorite techniques, it has a time and a place. If you have someone in a Muay Thai clinch and you eye gouge them, or you have somebody knee on chest and you eye gouge them, uh, yeah, that's gonna be a great place. When you're in this position, if you eye gouge them, you, first you probably don't, you aren't really in a position to apply enough force to really get the job done. But even if you were to eye gouge them, it's not like they'd go flying off of you dramatically. Now they are blinded, angry, and swinging wildly. The Gracies have this really great philosophy. They say position before submission. Now they're specifically referring to position as in like getting a solid side control before you go in for an Americana arm lock, but I like position before submission for all self-defense. Think about submission as anything that finishes the fight. The idea behind position before submission is instead of doing a Hail Mary pass to your finish, secure the finish. Set yourself up so that the finish is inevitable. Then you can go for the finish so that you don't run the risk of losing everything because you threw a Hail Mary pass that may not be caught on the other side. One of the big problems of the bully pin when your arms are pinned down like this is your opponent is actually resting their weight on your arms. And as a result, they have four points of contact on the ground. So they're like a really sturdy table. So if she just did the upa in real life, what would have happened is that his hands probably would have held him. Him throwing his hands forward like this to the ground was his uh, her partner being extremely compliant. Instead, the exact same motion where you're bridging your hips quickly into the air, but instead you also throw your hands down like a snow angel shape. Whereas if they have you pin and you just try this motion by itself, it tends not to work. And if you just try the upa 
by itself with your arms pinned. You, it won't free your hands. The combination is what will result in them letting go. It's very difficult for the human body to resist force in multiple directions. And so the idea is as you make that upa, they, they are going to try to hold themselves up and by them trying to apply pressure in one direction, as you throw your hands down, they won't be able to resist both. So the upa is really good. I would just add like a little snow angel motion where you throw your hands down by your hips and that would make the uh, wrist release more effective. So let's continue and look at the rest of the technique. So she grabs an arm and she covers the leg. So she's creating a barrier here. This is a, this is like one of the most fundamental grappling techniques is how to get out of top mount, what we call the trap and roll. By seizing this arm and seizing this leg, he cannot create posts to stop himself. So when she tries to roll, what he's going to want to try to do is he's going to want to try to put an arm out to stop that roll or stick his leg out to stop that roll. By trapping the arm and trapping the leg all on one side, it gives him no tools to create posts to stop the roll over. As she rolls, she uses her hips, so she does another upa, rolling over her shoulder so that she can really drive him over. This way, it's not just a matter of trying to roll, she's actually throwing her leg muscles into the attack, which then turns them over. Lots of times, if I teach this technique in seminar, uh, a lot of the beginners, especially the smaller students, just are in disbelief uh, that this would actually work against a larger opponent. But I assure you, this is one of the most time-tested techniques in martial arts. It seems almost too simple, but that's kind of the beauty of it. It's biomechanics at its finest. If you cannot put your arm out, you cannot put your leg out, you cannot resist the force of me turning you over. Now let's look at the next thing she does here. She immediately goes for an elbow, she stands up and immediately kicks to the groin. Striking is a fundamental part of self-defense. If you are not studying uh, striking in depth, if you're not studying striking in depth, you aren't really studying self-defense. However, rolling someone over and going for an elbow and trying to stand up and kick to the groin, I think that's a little bit ambitious. What she would really want to do here, instead of going straight for the face, would be to first control the hips. You can do this by pinning the hips with a palm. You can do this by crouching down and dropping your elbow on either side of his, his hips. But the idea is you want to get control of their body. A fundamental rule within the art of self-defense is if you control the head, you control the body. If you control the hips, you control the body. So you always want to take every opportunity you can to control either the head or the hips of your opponent. By reaching across for this elbow, you can even see that that elbow probably isn't the most realistic strike to practice there. She probably would not be able to perform an elbow strike to an opponent who had that much distance away from her. Instead, it would have been better for her to control the hips. Then once you have control over the hips, you can adjust your base, that's your legs, so that you can position yourself to wedge your knee up between their legs. So you actually end up want to end up kneeling in between their legs. So for example, here is a picture of Pedro Sauer posting his knee in between his opponent's legs. And what this does when you make that post, it makes it so that your opponent cannot collect you with their legs. It keeps that space. It gives you an opportunity to stand up, to pass the guard, or what have you. So if I was teaching this technique, what I would do is first teach the upa with the snow angel motion, throwing the hands down so that their arms would drop back. As far as collecting the arm, collecting the leg, I wouldn't change a thing. That's exactly the way that I would teach it. The upa, she did really well, bridging on the shoulder and coming around. But instead of sitting up and going for an elbow, I'd immediately go to control the hips of the opponent and then work towards getting this leg posted in between their legs. Then with that leg posted, I'm able to get up, maintain space, and continue either to attack them or to run away. Of course, that's my two cents on the situation. What do you think she could have done better? 
So I'm glad that you made it to the end of this video because it means that you are enjoying the content. So if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to click the thumbs up button, click the subscribe button, and click the little bell so that you can get notified whenever I make a new video. There's also plenty of opportunities to come train with me here in Indianapolis. If you live in my area, all the information you need to get started is on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. And if you live too far away to train with me in person, I do offer Zoom classes every Wednesday. And once again, you can sign up for those on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.